Hi, welcome to Transform Life Church. In a few moments, we'll be joining the service already in progress. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm glad that you're here with us. I pray that today's message will be a great blessing to you. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a moment to share some next steps with you. So I don't know, I said it already more than likely, happy anniversary TLC. And uh, 2020 is here, hey. And it is eight years. I remember when it was one year. I remember when it was no year. <laughs> and 2019, each year the Lord has continued to amaze us with his goodness to us. Last year we, we had Israel Houghton. Houghton. His, his name is Houghton. Israel Houghton and New Breed. And, and tremendous. Tremendous. We ordained five pastors. Yeah, uh, for King Jesus Ministries came here and did training. A few years ago, somebody prophesied that there will, be there will be a season of training, training, training. And we have just seen the Lord has given us favor with unusual. When the King Jesus people came here, they, they said, this doesn't normally happen. But God gave us favor. You know? And just the, the prof voices that have just passed through. Every prophet prophesying and, and either confirming or just, or just giving more revelation to what God is wanting to do in our midst. Uh, uh, God has been good. Is everybody with me? Uh, and I just feel like God is accelerating us in this season towards his destiny. The destiny that he has, you know, his mind for us. And, and we are taking territory locally for him. And, and his promise to us is that we'll have an unbelievable impact on our nation. I, I just believe revival is coming. Tell your neighbor, revival is coming. And our nation is going to be transformed. So if you're like me, I, I, when, when I'm not sure, I go to the Lord and ask him. So I started, I started questioning the Lord. How many people know that God is a speaking God, by the way? All right? He speaks back to you. So I started questioning the Lord. What is this about? What, where are you going? What is happening that, that, that you, you're confirming and, re, and reconfirming that's what you're doing in our lives? And, and the Lord started to just share some stuff with me. And I want to bring it more of an insight to you. I don't even quite know if it fits into a preach. <laughs> uh, so that's why you, 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 your notes are blank. I'm just bring you some insight. I'm, I'm telling you what the Lord has said to me. Right? And the Lord started to talk to me that there is a war on for Jamaica. That we are seeing some moves in the realm of the natural, but those moves are manifested in the realm of the spirit. And there's a war on for Jamaica. I heard one Jewish man say, Jamaica means what is God doing here in, in Hebrew? God has his hand on this nation. And for whatever reason, we are a strategic part of his, of his plan. And, 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 and therefore, there's sort of like the spiritual battle on for our nation. And, and this is a Kairos moment. Kairos means a specific moment in time when God wants to do a specific move. This is a Kairos moment, and how we respond to this moment is going to determine the future of our nation. If, if, we, if we idle it out, if we, old time people say, if you farm the fold, right? Um, Jamaica could be just lost to the clutches of darkness, but, but this is a season where he's empowering the people of God to take back the nation of God. And he reminded me that he calls me Joshua. Therefore, the people I need are a Joshua generation. And I don't know if you know, but Joshua was the one who took the land. So tell your neighbor that you are part of the Joshua generation. And if you are new and you have never heard this before, um, in, in way back in 1996, when God called me to, to, to move from secular into, into, I don't even want to use that. When God moved me from contributing my time at my job in an organization that is not church, and move me to church. This was the call that he gave me. And it's wider than this. But the kernel of the call is this. Be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people. To inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. 
So Joshua is the leader that took over from Moses. Moses carried them to the bank of the Jordan, and Joshua took over from there to carry them into the promised land. And in a, in a similar way, God was saying, I am leading a set of people to inherit their spiritual inheritance. And, and the Lord started to give me some insights into why Joshua captured the land and, and what were some of the issues that were going on there. And, and, I, and he started to show me the parallels between them and what is happening now. And just as he guided Joshua then, he's guiding me now. And there are some enemies that we are going to have to face in what he, he, we are going to do. And he wants us to catch a territory for the expansion of his kingdom. You see, with Joshua, it was not only about giving them a place to live. That is what is on the surface, but there is something happening behind the scenes. Something that you, you can't see and touch. Behind the scenes was spiritual warfare. The land was under the control of false gods. The gods of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the parasites, according to my wife. <laughs> But these gods were really demons. You see, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We take it simply now. We, we sometimes don't understand the gravity of this, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. For Joshua to take them, he had to displace these demons. He had to push them back and push them out. And these high-level demons was, were drawing their strength from the people. So let me tell you how this thing works in the realm of the spirit. Who we give, who we exalt, gets the power. So if the nation is exalting evil, evil has power. And the evil uses that power to influence the mind of the rest of the nation. It's a, it's a strange thing. It's like a cycle. So, so we don't even... Knowing it, you, you tend to want to do certain things that are bad. Is everybody with me? If God is exalted and God sort of has the handle on the nation, then people just tend towards righteousness. So, so this was a battle that was going on for the land. And God has promised a land to the Israelites. So I began to investigate just, just what was going on, just to get some clues. And I, and I started letting you into my investigation. So, so we're going to read a passage uh, about what was really going on. The Lord was going to give them the land. Let's read this together. After three, one, two, three. The Lord your God will cut off before you the nations you are about to invade and dispossess. But when you have driven them out and have settled in their land, and after they have been destroyed before you, be careful not to be ensnared by inquiring about their gods, saying, how do these nations serve their gods? You must not worship the Lord your God in their way, because in worshiping their gods, they do all kind of deceptible things the Lord hates. So God was saying to them that you are going to succeed. I am with you. You cannot fail. But after you have succeeded, do not go inquiring after their gods. Do not, do not behave like the people who worship those gods. And do not attempt to worship me like how they worship their gods. So in other words, even to worship like they worship their gods, it's an abomination to me. It's like you're worshiping the God. It's not, you're not worshiping me. And, and God was giving them a clue that these things that they do are detestable. And in those lands, they worshiped idols. But behind the idols was really, were really demons. right? And I want to show you that because I want you to come with me. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 that food sacrificed to idols are really sacrificed to demons. Let's read that together. It says, the sacrifices of pagans are offered to what? Not to God. And I do not want you. So he's saying, look here. Separate yourself. Know who your God is. Don't mix up yourself. 
these things are detestable. And, 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 and when the children of Israel moved in, their purpose was to push back the enemies of God. God wanted to liberate the land first. The land itself was under a curse. The land itself was, was, being, was being twisted. And God wanted to liberate. And if demonic agents are alone to reign, they just defile the land. They corrupt the very land itself. Not only the people on the land, but the land itself. So God's warning to them. Let's read something further. Um, Leviticus 18. It says this. After 3. 1, 2, 3. Do not defile yourselves. Because... Even the land was defiled. So I punished it for its sin. And the land vomited out. For all these things were done by the people. understand when principalities and powers control the land the land gets defiled but it's the people's behavior that cause demons to come and God will set himself against the people so the land will vomit out the people if you know the history of, of Israel every time they sinned they went into exile in in modern days people come own your land instead of you people come own your businesses instead of you the land becomes given to foreigners rather than the, uh, than the original occupants having the land. Is everybody understanding what I'm saying? This is, it, it starts in the realm of the heavens and comes down to earth. And, and when, God is, when demons are in control, behavior is out of control. When God is in control, the place is peaceful, the place is productive, family life is good, etc. And, and for some of us, you know, I know, well, because I've been there. So for some of us, it's, it's hard to grasp. Well, let, let me give you a story. Our offices are at Shortwood Road, and Shortwood Road, where we are, neighbors, Grand Spen. So I made friends with, uh, with, with some of the pastor from your head who has, a, has, who has a church right across the road from us, Upper Room Church. And Pastor Muir said in the years that he, when he just came to Grand Spen, when he was moving into Grand Spen, everybody was moving out. He says gang warfare was at its highest. He says murder was at its highest. The, there was no safety. Rape and drugs were at their highest. He gave me a joke one day. He says if somebody got a taxi man to carry them there and the taxi man went up a lane, it is likely that the taxi man will come back down the lane because his car gets stolen by the man. Is everybody understanding? Businesses were shutting down, etc. And he did some practical things. The Lord gave him wisdom to do some practical things. And he heard it on his testimony. But what he recognized is that there was a direct correlation with gang violence and witchcraft in the area. The amount of bomb you had, uh, How many people? You know what? When they go past and you see them up a flag flag. <laughs> yeah, man, the flag flag them. Bomb yard and obi man and Pokemania. The amount of those kinds of places that were in the area were alarming. And the Lord gave him wisdom that this is tied with this. So spiritually, he had to go up against the bomb yard. And as I go up, you know, I mean like go outside the bomb yard and start praying. Right? As he did that, the power of the witchcraft worker inside was cut. And they started to move out of the area. And so they moved, I saw the area change. No businesses are coming back into the era. There is no what happened. The spiritual atmosphere has been cut, so the people start to behave different. Is everybody understanding where I'm going with this thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know with me. You see, the truth is that you're even influenced, you're either influenced by the mind of the Lord or you're influenced by the mind of the enemy. There is no in between. And Joshua went into the land. It was more about, it was less about finding a place to live, although they did find a place to live. 
But central to that was ousting whatever principality was controlling the land. That thing that was defiling the land. That thing that was bringing destruction in the land. And he went in and started cleaning it up. Installed the true and living God. And when he was there for all his life, the, the people were productive, the people were prosperous, the people lived in peace among themselves, and the Lord gave them the authority and power to capture territory. But if you know the history of Israel, as soon as he died, the people started to wonder about the other gods that are around, and the people started to do the practices that they started to do, and, and the land became defiled, and, and because of that, they always ended up in destitution. Always ended up every time they were in the situation, they were in exile or they were they, they were oppressed by their neighbors, they were in poverty, the land would not produce, mayhem followed. You see, here's the thing: we invite what we exalt. Tell your neighbor, we invite what we exalt. Anything that you exalt, you actually invite. And 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 Israel followed the same sequence every time they went into this bondage. And I want to give you the insight on that. Because there are three main gods that always occur. And they always occurred in a certain sequence. So I write this down if you're writing. The first god that always comes was Baal or Baal, as his name is, its name is properly pronounced. And this was the primary god of the Canaanites. And this is a god of, of greed and materialism. The, the irony of it is that God would bless them. But when them get the money, instead of remaining true to the God, them start to have greed and it turn into materialism. Now materialism, materialism is a mindset that the material things of life are of primary importance, not secondary to anything. And we know anything that we put above God becomes an idol. So materialism is an idol. And, 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 and we live in a world just look at the season that we are, we are coming out of, Christmas. Now, we know it is not Christ's birthday. But we choose to celebrate it to remember his birthday because he has been so good. So, it name Christ must. But it has become so materialistic that they want to take Christ. You see, the reason why we exchange gifts is that God's son was a gift to us. This much is about, about spreading the news of Jesus, going into to the places where the less fortunate is. But, but, but the truth is that that is on the back burner now. It's all about what I can get. It, it, a materialism. So you tell us something. Materialism is not about nice things. Materialism about the heart of getting the nice thing. You understand what I'm saying? So one man can buy a Rolls Royce and not be materialistic. Another man can buy a used Corolla and be materialistic. Because driving behind it is that it gives me my, my, my identity. And Baal is the God of that. And when Baal starts to come in, Baal, when the people start to acknowledge Baal and operate that way, Baal pushes the true God to the fringes of society. He takes God out of the public sphere. It happened in Israel. He makes sure that your children don't acknowledge who God is. Just think about some of our North American neighbors. You can't pray in school anymore. Do you understand what is going on? That is a yes moment. If or no. You see, Baal is alive and well. He has only changed the way that he does the thing. But he's doing it anyway. Is everybody with me? When Baal comes, Baal has two people that usually come, two demons that usually come with him. The first one is Asherah. So when you read places like, like Judges 5, you see this, the, the idol of Baal and the pole of Asherah, the Asherah pole. Asherah is the second one that comes. Asherah is 
the goddess of lust and sexual immorality. So her priestesses are prostitutes. And how you get delivered from sin is by sleeping with a prostitute. Like, I, I don't understand. And under the influence of Asherah, sexuality is taken out of the context of marriage where it is supposed to be. And it is looser. It is let go on the society. And the culture becomes sexualized. And, and, and sex is more in the public sphere. And there is a proliferation of images like of naked women and, and sexual acts and anytime it happened to, to Israel let us went out of control and, and, and this demon is the demon of destruction and the hint is that sexual immorality brings destruction so I want you to think about our nation just think about when people are advertising dance hall what kind of images are out there is everybody understanding where I'm going with this thing Think about our carnival costumes. Think about the dances that are done in carnival or the dances that are done in, in dance hall. What, what the enemy does, him, him have a flavor for everybody. Is everybody understanding what I am saying? Yeah, man, say something, man, say something, man. <laughs> right, right, right. Asherah also is a, is a demon that is responsible for sexual confusion. Some of, our, some of our priestesses would dress half as a man and half as a woman. Have we ever heard that before? <laughs> Do you understand? What we see in the natural has a spiritual beginning. After Baal comes and Asherah comes, the next God to come is usually a God by the name of Molech. Molech is the God of death. I am saying that way. So I'm using that because that's my discernment of it. Molech is the one that, that they would worship their children by putting them into the fire. Is everybody knowing that one? So therefore you read in the, in, the, in, in the pages and they pass their children through the fire. Has, has that, is that term familiar to anybody? How many people read them Bible, right? <laughs> I can write that. And what Molech is about is taking away the value of life. If life has no value, murder is easy. Think about some of the stories that we hear about in Jamaica about people killing people over bullock. And do you understand what I'm trying to say? The value of a life now is about $500. If you get a man of $500, he will kill somebody for you. So materialism comes in, or greed, that gives way to sexual immorality. The, the fabric of the society starts to break down. Marriages start to break down. That kind of thing. And then that gives way to just the value of life not being there. And every time Israel broke down, it broke down pretty much in that order. And I want you to look at that sequence and look into the world. Look into Jamaica and tell me if you don't see that thing going on. And quite frankly, the church is weak, generally. Back to the Bible, did I research? 49% of Jamaicans say that they are born again. If 49% of Jamaicans say they're born again, the nation is not supposed to look so. But when they did further research, over half of that 49% don't go to church and don't read their Bible. So as far as we're concerned, you know, quite frankly, them not saved. Them say them saved. And I give you a bad name. Do you understand what I'm saying? But even of the rest, you have to ask, where is our fight? So God is saying to me that I am on the move. 
People have been crying out to me and I have come to make a change. So what we see is that various camps just start rise up. You know, you have, you have TBC, them rising up and they are doing their prayer thing. And you have other people in other parishes doing their thing. You see, God is on the move and God is calling us to be on the move. Are you with me? When God is on the move, it can change. When Jesus came into the earth, paganism was at its highest. It, materialism was at its highest. Um, sexual perversion was at its highest. People used to be married and still have them boy. They, they, it was at its highest. Murder was common. Murder was state instituted. Do you understand? They could have killed anybody at a whim. But the gospel came into that situation. And as the gospel took root, all of those demons fled. So, so much so that by the time two or three hundred years had gone, you know, nearly half the world's population was saved as the world's known population at the time. Do you understand? This? You see, the gospel has power. The gospel has power. God is calling us to be a just generation. To, to take the gospel to the territories of this nation. To make a difference in this nation. To take back this nation. He has called us to, to take territory in our personal and as corporately as a church. So us planting churches is not about having more church. That is not the end. It's not about saying that I have 10 churches. That is not the point. The point is driving back the spirit of darkness. Are you, are you with me? The point is about transforming this nation for the glory of God. He sees our country. He has heard our cry. And he wants a set of people who want to subdue and dominate for his name. And let me tell you, some people just can't. You know, we said them things and we're like, really? So I want to show you a video. Now, this is happening all over the world in many places, but this video is more a documentary. It's, it's done in that way, right? And I want you to see what happens when a nation sort of starts to engage God, how it, how, what change it can make. Almolonga was an extremely poor village. This was a community in total poverty and alcohol addiction. Violence, ignorance, witchcraft, the occult, idol worshiping. Just 20 years ago, Al Malanga was a dark and dangerous place. Suffered from poverty, violence, ignorance, and besides that, alcohol was the main problem. If you go to Al Malanga 20 years ago in the morning, 7 a.m., and walk the streets of Al Malanga, you would have encountered many, many men just lying on the street because they were totally drunk. We had many jails because there were so many problems. Chief of Police Donato Santiago recalls that people were always fighting. Officials built four jails, but even they couldn't contain the problem. Overflow prisoners were routinely bused to a nearby city. Domestic violence was especially pronounced. During these dark days, the gospel did not fare well. Outside evangelists were commonly chased away with sticks or rocks, while small local house churches were also stoned. Evangelical Christians were a despised minority. On one occasion, six men shoved a gun barrel down Mariano's throat. As they began to pull the trigger, he silently petitioned the Lord for protection. When the hammer fell, nothing happened. Delivered from death, Pastor Riscahe called his small flock into prayer. It was time to break the stranglehold of violence, superstition, and poverty. As the intercessors lifted their petitions heavenward, they were filled with a supernatural faith. We told the Lord, it is not possible that we could be so insignificant when your word says we are heads and not tails. We kept fasting three or four days a week and every Saturday we held a prayer vigil. And that was what I think opened the door. 
people started to be delivered, men started to be saved and come to church. It was a tremendous, tremendous blessing. A revival, I would call it. And then after uh, many signs and wonders started taking place and, and uh, a lot of mass deliverances from demonic oppression, um, churches started growing. Is it true today that when people pray In 1994, the last of Alma Longa's four jails closed. The remodeled building is now called the Hall of Honor. For Police Chief Santiago, these are the good times. You don't have any jails in town now? No, nothing. Because you don't need them? No, because there's no people that, that do trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no people that do trouble. No, it's not like before. Even the town's agricultural base has come to life. For years, crop yields around Alma Longa suffered from a combination of arid land and poor work habits. But when people have turned to God, they have seen a remarkable transformation of their land. And Almolonga became a fertile valley. It is so fertile that the land is so, so good. They produce the best vegetables. They get as many as three harvests per year. They sell their vegetables to Guatemala, south of Mexico, and El Salvador. Before the spiritual turnaround, growers were exporting four truckloads of produce a month. Now they leave town 40 times a week. Nicknamed America's Vegetable Garden, Al Malonga's produce is of biblical proportions. You have to see them to believe. A bit is four and a half pounds. A carrot is this size. It is, it is just unbelievable. It Look, it's bigger than my heart. It's that big. God and is the gospel powerful enough to truly impact our community. Al Malonga teaches us yes. You had a community given to idolatry, witchcraft, alcoholism, disruptive families, and now you have a community transformed. And that's a good picture to us that yes, God can do it there and he can do it in my community. God has lifted us and we need to take advantage of this opportunity. We are a generation that God is going to use in the transformation, not only of our community, but the whole world. It is a beautiful spectacle to go and see the, the, the effect of the gospel, because you, you actually can see it. And that's what we want for our communities, for our cities, and for our nations. Now, um, what you said before now, what happens if the, if the demons are exalted, it defiles even the land. How does an arid, unfertile land suddenly, is everybody understanding what I'm saying? Become a fertile land. That is in the realm of impossible enough. But when God do the thing, when the enemy is there, everything dry up. Is everybody understanding what I'm saying? When God is there, God himself transforms down to the land. Think about closing all the jails of me. Just think, about, just think through that process. What God is looking for is a set of people who will say, yes. I wondered about it, you know. Because I don't believe so I'm the first person him said to. He's probably saying it to a lot of people, but you have to have the kohinas. You may never say nothing wrong, man. Just work with me. You have to have, you have to say yes. Look here, we say it clear all the while, you know. I don't want my children to do not what I supposed to do. Anything I supposed to do, I will do it. Them will have them fear them own problem. But I want to do it. And I believe God is calling. He's looking for Joshua generation. They are, the Joshua generation have some characteristics, you know. 
Let's, let's go through them quickly as, as, as I look to close. The Joshua generation are a people of purpose. We know that we are called on purpose. And we operate out of purpose. We don't operate out of feeling. We operate out of purpose. We are a people on purpose and for purpose. Everybody have any kind of prophetic, anything at all. From them hit the platform, prophesy the same thing. God is saying it over and over and over and over again. So you know that you have a purpose. And it is God's will. It did not come out of a strategic plan. We never sit in our room and think it up on our own. God has declared it to him, making a no say it did not have its origin. And if God said it, he will accomplish it. He does not fail. Is everybody understanding what I'm saying? What he's looking for is a set of people who will believe him. Here's what Joshua said. Joshua, the, the one in the Bible. It says this. You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all these good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Not one. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. God has promised us so. And the, the days of excuses, them days they done. I want you to read to me. You have permission to believe it's you that God wants to use in a big way. So tell that to your neighbor. You have permission. The creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Are there any sons of God in the room? Number two, the, um, the, 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 the Joshua generation is a generation of faith. We have, to upper, we, have to, we have to grasp the spirit that grasped Joshua and Caleb. When Joshua and Caleb saw the giants, Joshua and Caleb said, yes, the Lord can do it. The other ten, and then the rest of the community said, no, we cannot do it. And God is a God of humor. He keep Joshua and Caleb alive and allow the rest of them to die out. So he could allow another generation to come up that has a different mindset. I want you to hear because God has said it. You are that generation. You have the mindset that God wants. You have the overcoming mindset. But you have to set that mindset into motion. We have to understand what God is doing. The battle is the Lord's. But the Lord will not do it on his own. You see the people of faith. The people of faith are a people of prayer. So this year coming, it's a different season. We can't be lackadaisical about our, our personal prayer. We cannot be lackadaisical about our corporate prayer. There's an anointing for your personal prayer, but there's an anointing that comes when you corporately pray. So when we call prayer meeting, you are to be there. So this Friday is our leaders prayer meeting and leaders lead. Is everybody with me? So therefore, if you have a leaders prayer meeting this Friday, clear your schedule. If you have children at home and you have your wife a leader, one come 10 to 2 and the other come 2 to 6. Are you with me? This is, this is a Kairos moment. This is not the moment. Mentioning Pastor Jones' word, God says he's going to bless some of us. He's going to put us in places of promotion, in places of prominence. It, God wants you to remember say, him to today now. Because he's putting it there so that you will have influence to be part of the change. Are you with me? God said, I'm going to give you no wealth. The reason why the money coming is so that you can reinvest it in the kingdom. He wants some people who he can trust to be a river and not a lake. Because what can be happening now? Is that when we get the money, we're rich and. <laughs> and the raw truth, you know. It happened to the Israelites and you know, so it's biblical. 
You have to be purposeful to remember that God is blessing me to be a blesser of the kingdom. You have to be kingdom minded. The people of um, the Joshua generation is proactive. They're not waiting to hear something. They are pushing out into the world. The Joshua generation are people of the Bible. God gave Joshua the key to success. He says, do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Now, I don't know which version I'm quoting it from, and it's different from the screen. But meditate on it day and night, so you will be careful to do everything written in it. In other words, understanding the Bible affects your doing. And your doing affects your being. When you do it, you'll be prosperous and successful. The Joshua generation are a people of purity. How you walk in the Lord is critical. You cannot be pushing back darkness and be a part of the darkness at the same time. Achan, Joshua 7, write it down if you need to research it. Achan in Joshua 7, sinned. Joshua said, um, the Lord said, leave everything in, in Jericho for me. And there's a big principle in that. You know. The first belongs to the Lord. The rest of them could have, but the first belongs to the Lord. Achan saw some robes or whatever it is, and he took it. And the scripture says, Israel sinned. Achan, alone. But the Israelites were unfaithful. Achan alone. Um, regarding the devoted things. Achan, son of Camry, took some of them. And the Lord's anger burnt against Israel. Your sin does not affect you alone. Some of us, is my private business. No, it is not. God know it. And I'm not pleased with it. And sometimes we are trying to to the Lord and do what the Lord accomplished. And it is you, whoever that is for, just welcome it and hold it. I'm not talking about having a slip in your life. I'm talking about habitual. Don't care. Rebellion. Go, you know, deliberately being disobedient. 36 people lost their lives. One man sin. You should write this on. Sin blocks revival. So the first place before the Lord, hold on there. it is not the world's sin that block revival. Because the world is expected to sin. We are called saints. Tell your neighbor, if you are saved, you are a saint. It is the, world, it is the church's sin that, that blocks revival. No. So therefore, we have to be revived if you know yourself. If you have a materialistic problem, carry it to the Lord. If you have a sex problem, carry it to the Lord. If you have a murder problem, not for we are murder right now. Remember that the scripture says, if you have, if you have it in your mind, you know, it's like you have done it. Not for a man. When the, when the taxi man drive away. With the pan, Allah like a him, him fit. Is everybody understanding? Judgment has to begin first in the house of the Lord. We have to consider ourselves with sober judgment. If God is going to take the territory, we have to take territory in our hearts first. Is everybody with me? Wow, I need to close. Last, the Joshua generation is an overcoming generation. 
when we're on mission like this, you know, there are going to be obstacles in the way. But we have to be a people that will overcome. When things come, you know, raise your hand and say, Lord of mercy, look on that. We say, Lord, thank you that you have a way. That you are a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. Thank you, Lord, that you are an obstacle breaker, uh, uh, a mountain remover. Do you understand what I'm saying? Thank you, God, that you part red seas all the time. Thank you, God, that you give us innovation, that you give us revelation, you give us understanding. We have to be that kind of people that know that God is going to do something uh, extraordinary. Let's stand. <laughs> we don't have the time left. Oh, praise the Lord. I wonder how many people are on the Lord's side. I just saying, God, if you can use anything, Lord, in this season, use me. See me, Lord, Lord, I am weak, I am frail, but you are able to make me strong. Father, we want to just thank you for eight years. Lord, in, by, in no means do we take any glory for ourselves. We say, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. But Lord, we sense from your spirit that this is just the tip of the iceberg. That there is so much more to come. And Lord, we are affirming that we want to be ready. Lord, we all have challenges. Those things in the areas of our lives that we're working on. And we're saying, Lord, despite our challenges, use us, God. To the best of our ability, we will walk righteous in you. We will walk right in you. Lord, strengthen us, Lord. Give us insight. Give us wisdom how to break the yokes, Lord, of, of the sins that easily beset us. But we want to accomplish what you will. Lord, we want to be a people of faith. You said it. We believe it. That settles it. We want to be a people, Lord, who no hitch. Lord, we want to understand purpose and walk in that purpose. We want to be an overcoming generation. We want to be a, a holy generation, Lord. We want, we want to push back that, those forces of darkness, Lord. Show us the partners that we must get in this process, God. Open up that for us, Lord, and open up the way for us, Lord. We want to go to Portmore. Let's make a Portmore next. Make a way, my God. Make a way. This is not about self-aggrandizement. It is about the glory of the living God. And we declare and affirm that we are ready. And even in agreement, just shout a big amen. amen. Well, God bless you. Real good. See you next week as we start our new series, The New You. Have a great day. Hi again. I hope that today's message was an inspiration to you. I pray that you'd experience God's best. In your life. If you made a first time decision for Jesus today, I encourage you to get involved in a local Bible believing church. Also, drop us a line at info at hetransforms.me and I'll send you our book. First Steps for the New Believer. It is free of cost. Additionally, if you are in the Kingston and Metropolitan area, feel free to come and join us on Sundays. You can check our website for further details. God bless you real good.